Hi, everybody. This is Stephanie Ruber. Thank you for tuning in to the Meaning of Everything podcast, where we entertain seriously revolutionary ideas. Today is episode number 23X, and I am going to be talking about whether we are morally obligated to help save the world. Yeah, that's super exciting, right? I'm very happy to be talking about this today. It's a topic that I have put a lot of thought into over the course of the last 30 years, say give or take, uh, and definitely the last several months and years. Before I jump into this idea about our moral obligation, I need to announce our winner. This is an X episode, which means that somebody wins a free book because they wrote a review for the podcast and I was feeling very grateful. I am adding new books to the list of books that I give away all the time. So it's always worth checking out. And the list is, it's a pretty cool list anyway. So I do recommend just if you're looking for some reading material, stephanieruper.com slash book giveaway, you can always uh, find some resources there. There's a pretty good chance that you can win a book if you enter into the drawing. There are lots of episodes of this podcast, so lots of drawings. This week's winner, her name is Mitali. She gets to pick a book. She has not chosen one yet, but that's very exciting. So do enter the giveaway if, if you feel so inclined. Don't If you don't feel so inclined, thank you all very much for your support. It is, as ever, really deeply appreciated. You can find this podcast on a wide variety of platforms on iTunes and Spotify and pretty much any podcast listening app. And also, of course, on YouTube. My YouTube channel is just Stephanie Ruper. Very easy, very easy to find the meaning of everything on YouTube. Okay, so today, let's talk about moral obligation. This is really concerning to me. It has become increasingly concerning over the course of the last few years, in part because I think everybody has sort of realized, has stepped out of whatever kind of bubbles we were in, if we were in them to begin with, and realized that the world has deeply pressing needs politically, environmentally, socially, emotionally, pretty much in every category across the board, we're looking at a deep, arguably catastrophic need that the, that the world has. And now they're on broad display now that we have social media, which is, I think, mostly a blessing. I think a lot of people, I know a lot of people who complain about social media, who think that you shouldn't post things that are contentious or deep or pressing, but rather that you should always just be nice and cute. But the world isn't nice and cute, you know? And if we're going to be engaging in discourse, then I think it should be discourse about the kinds of things that really matter. So anyway, uh, I think we have become more aware of these issues over time. Something that occurred to me in, in the way, on the way of my life, especially in my 20s, was actually that there are so many people in the world with an immense amount of privilege, and I mean this in terms of having access to money and stable homes and good education, and really privilege takes a wide variety of forms, right? But I think that there are, there is so much out there in the world, there are so much gift, so much blessedness, if you will. And I noticed this when I was on dating websites, and a meeting, scrolling through profile after profile after profile of people who were very interested in a lot of stuff and arguably some interesting things, but didn't appear to care at all about the deep needs that the world has. I didn't care at all about helping reform whatever they could about the world's challenges. And so I, I felt very disillusioned with my generation and and people generally, and really disheartened by how little people seem to care. I think it's pretty common these days for people to think that an egoist view of morality is fine. And by this, I mean, positive egoism states basically that you just go ahead and do what feels good for you. And there's a pretty good chance that helping other people will be a part of that equation, but maybe not. 
but that's really your only obligation in the world is to do what feels good for you. And it has become an increasingly popular idea over the course of the last hundred years or so, a few hundred years, as the Western zeitgeist, uh, zeitgeist is a philosophical uh, posh way of saying a history of thought, the churning over of ideas, zeitgeist comes from German. The Western zeitgeist has lost its commands its obligation, I almost said commandment, right? It's commands to be good that came from an absolute deity that came from God because we more or less disrupted the role that God plays in our space. Now, of course, many people continue to believe in God and many people continue to practice within religious traditions. But when they do it, they know that we live in a culture, we live in a world in which their belief isn't 100% absolute, because we're aware, we're all aware that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of things that you could believe, and we're all aware that you basically, you kind of have a choice, and you're, it's just not the same as tens of thousands of years ago when people were living out in a tribe, and everybody there believed the same thing. I mean, this was even the case hundreds of years ago, say when pretty much everybody assented to the same basic worldview and received legitimacy from the same basic worldview. So nowadays we live in a world in which it's so easy to rationalize not being a good person. It's so easy to say, oh, I may as well just be evil. I may as well just do whatever. There's no consequences. And this is actually a really big question and big point of contention between atheists and people who ascribe firmly to a religious belief. Atheists are the most distrusted group of people in America, period. Now this is because there's a very large contingent of America that is very, very religious, but they actually, there have been, <laughs> studies have shown that Americans tend to trust atheists on the same par as rapists. And that's, that's, just a, that's just a fact. An atheist has very little chance of, of being elected, at least according to, again, very large surveys that have been conducted over the course of the last few decades. And this is in part because people think that if you're an atheist, you have license to do whatever you want. Now, I actually, it's very interesting because my personal understanding, my personal discernment and what's going on here is that there is actually, there is no difference in terms of who is good or who is bad on either side of this debate, religious or atheist. Because if you're religious, there's no guarantee that you're going to be good either. In fact, throughout history, people have committed massive atrocities in the name of the Christian religion and justified them with their religion. And so many people argue, like Sam Harris, that religion can actually be a force for evil because it enables people to justify their evil in such a firm way. Now, of course, atheists can also justify their evil by saying, oh, well, I don't believe in anything, so evil is fine. My point is that you really don't have a moral upper hand on either side. You really don't. And people, are, people always find justifications for what they do, right, and for meeting their own personal needs. And so the question remains, are we actually obligated? Now, I bring this up in part because in our most recent podcast, in our, my most recent two podcasts, I talked with Don Crosby, who is one of my favorite philosophers of all time. And Crosby firmly believes that outside of a religious viewpoint, you are still obligated to help save the world. You are still obligated to participate, to try to affect positive change. And this is very interesting. This is a far cry. This is a far cry from the types of thinking that you see in more nihilistic viewpoints where people say, oh, well, you can get away with anything now. You can do whatever you want. I'm just here to get my own. And I've encountered so many people to reiterate throughout my life who have thought this way. So if you remember from our, our most recent episode, Crosby says that we are obligated because we exist in a web of creatures of beings that feel things, and we all have equally valuable 
equally valid wants and needs. You could perhaps argue that these wants and needs scale with your degree of consciousness. Say perhaps my wants and needs are more valuable than a insects because I have more capacity to feel and to suffer. Although we actually don't know that. We don't know that for sure. We don't know that. We don't know that. And in fact, more and more information is constantly emerging about the degree of not just intelligence, but also specifically feeling of animals, right? Very deep feeling, very deep suffering is very real. And so to be able to say that, to be able to compare which creature's suffering is more deep or more worthwhile or more worthy of our attention is actually much harder to do philosophically. It's harder to justify uh, because, again, the, the science is really out on whether on whether animals, uh, what their suffering is like compared to ours and whether your degree of awareness matters. And we're not even sure how much animals are aware of things. So Crosby says that we are obligated. We're obligated because everybody's suffering is comparable. In the grand scheme of things, when you're looking at the universe as a whole, there is zero reason that your quality of experience is better than or more important than somebody else's quality of experience, period. And so if you step back, if you zoom out and you look at all and you decide that there is value in the world and you decide that we have the capacity to act with morality, that we are a species that has the capacity to make choices about what we do, to discern whether things are good or bad, then we are necessarily bound in this web to do that which is good over that which is bad because my life is no better or more important than somebody else's. In that sense, I am bound in this web and also we co-suffer, right? And we live in societies together. And if we don't take care of one another, these societies will disintegrate. And progress will cease to exist. The variability for the human species and for other species in this world, because they are so dependent on our actions, the variability for us to survive is dependent upon our willingness to take care of one another. And so we have here two complementary but very different arguments. One is the latter one that I just said, which is that we are obligated on the basis, on the practical basis of making sure that society continues to exist. And this is in a degree selfish because it continues to exist and I personally get to continue to exist within it. My children, the people I care about most deeply, I don't have children. I brought that up as an example. So humans, we, we have this partially practical, partially selfish motivation for wanting the world to sustain and to be good and better. We want to participate in society in a just way so that society will be just to us. That's very real. But on this deeper level that Crosby articulates that I deeply love, when you evaluate the suffering of all potential life forms, take yourself out of your own positionality, then we are all equal. And this isn't to say then, therefore, that you need to make great sacrifices and that you need to give so much of yourself that you lose your own well-being, because your well-being matters too. But it is no more important than somebody else's. And it can be a great act of heroism and love to actually make those kinds of sacrifices if you so choose, although it is perhaps not required of you that you give so much of yourself that, that you suffer. But I do see this as a moral obligation. And I also see all of these things together, the two types of obligation that I'm talking about here, come together in another thing that Crosby talked about, which is our ability to contribute, right? The cosmos is continually unfolding. Crosby talks about time as, it is in a sense like a river, right? And the world is always unfolding. And to whatever extent we have some freedom, and I believe that we do, and responsibility, we can actually create something new and better and good and beautiful. We have that power. And as the comic books always tell us, with great power, 
actually comes great responsibility. Creatures will suffer if we don't do this, and we will never get to see what the human species is capable of if we don't commit ourselves to trying to make it better. And why not, right? Why not? Why just go kite surfing and read 19th century literature and listen to Mouse Rat or whatever? That was a Parks and Rec joke. But I'm, I'm referring right now specifically to the profiles of people that I know that I would see on social media and on dating websites and are just sort of bumbling around being nice enough, recycling sometimes, maybe giving some money to a homeless person here or there if you're feeling particularly charitable, but most people say probably not and they rationalize it for so many different reasons. This is fine, but wouldn't life actually feel deeply meaningful and kind of exciting if you step out of your own shoes and give your, gave yourself over to this potential realization of something that is actually in the Platonic, that is the Plato sense, good and beautiful and true. I think that's about as spiritual or as religious or as deeply felt and existential that you can get with or without having a God in the picture. It's comparable, I think, to having a God in the picture. And no, you're not obligated by some pending punishment. You're not maybe going to go to hell if you mess up in this naturalistic worldview. But what kind of morality is the kind of morality where you're only nice to people because you think you might be punished otherwise, right? This is a common argument of atheists and I, I'm totally behind it. I think there's something really beautiful about choosing to be good and choosing to live into that obligation, which I think is very real. We're also a species that has the ability to feel and enact justice. We feel, we have an inborn sense for right and wrong. And I'm not saying that what we think is right and wrong is actually what's right and wrong, but we have feelings about what's right and wrong. And we have the ability to work within them and to tweak them and perfect them and, and create this beautiful world. And so, yes, I do think that we are morally obligated. I think that it makes all of our lives better it makes the lives better of the people I'm trying to help, and it makes my life better by trying to help and by participating, providing meaning to my life in this construction of what uh, many of my Christian friends might call the kingdom. So I'll leave it at that today. This was a little bit of a recap of what Crosby was talking about last week, and also a little bit of flushing out of the details of this moral system and my own position in terms of who we are and, and what we need to do as a species. I will leave it at that. This has been episode number 23X of The Meaning of Everything. I am Stephanie Rupert. You know where to find me, Facebook, Insta. I will see you there. Take care.